Welcome to worship this day. I'm welcoming you because for some of our congregation, we're beginning services indoors with a limited number of people, and we'll be also live streaming that service. So, of course, you've got this um, recorded worship service for you, but you can also tune in that way to our live stream. So, we begin here today because... Jesus is going to say something pretty interesting. He's going to say, give to Caesar, to the Roman government, what is Rome's, and to God, what is God's. And the, he asks for a coin to be shown, and it's a Roman coin. And he says, well, give to Caesar what Caesar's, and to God's what is God's. So that's what we're going to wrestle with today. We're going to wrestle with how do we do that, and really what's behind this. And maybe it has something to do with whose we are, who do we really belong to, and who's really in charge of our lives, and how it is that God actually comes to us. So all of that's going to be wrapped up in the Word today as we hear from Exodus and Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, the beginning of that letter, and then from this amazing teaching of Jesus. So whether you're near or far, we're so glad you are here. There's a Connect card that's been up and will come up at different places in the service, and that's a great way for you to communicate with us and stay in touch with us. So may you be blessed today by our worship and our encounter with the Word and Sacrament. I'm standing here this morning in front of the Clear Creek or Sequad Interpretive Center, and I've always kind of wondered what that word meant. Uh, Sequad means to spear it. It was a name that was given to this area, the Clear Creek and Dyes Inlet area. And uh, it means spirit, not as in Holy Spirit, but literally a, a way of fishing, to uh, spear a fish. And so we gather here this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, if we say we have no sin, the truth is not in us. We deceive ourselves. So let us confess our sin to God who is faithful and just and who has promised to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I invite you to take a breath with me, a cleansing breath this morning and take a moment of silent reflection now. Most merciful God, we confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. throughout the world for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you come to us and break into our presumptions of righteousness, revealing yourself not in the way we desire, but in and through the cross of Christ. Give us your spirit that we can release our control and allow you to be in charge of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey kids, children's sermon, Sunday school time. Jesus tells us a pretty amazing saying today. He's getting towards the end of his ministry and some people don't like Jesus too much and they're trying to trip him up. They're trying to throw a monkey wrench, as we sometimes say, in his way. And they pose an interesting question to him. They say, is it lawful to give the tax, to pay the tax to the Caesar, to the Romans? Here's a denarius, a Roman, a picture of a Roman silver coin. And it was like the, the core money of the Roman Empire. And so... Jesus is asked in front of other Jewish people, his people, if it's okay to pay taxes to a government that's 
got different values than they have and and whatnot. And they think they they've got it because if he says yes, then um, the Jewish people won't like him. But if he says no, then the Roman folks can get him in trouble for saying you you can't pay taxes to Caesar. So Jesus says something really amazing. He says, show me the coin. And the Jewish folks produce, Herodians, the folks that followed Herod in particular, we don't know who brought forward the coin, probably the Herodians, but they bring forth the denarius. Jesus says, show me the coin, and they show him. Now, this coin wasn't supposed to be in the temple because Jewish folks only use Jewish money, the shekel. And this shouldn't have even been there. But Jesus says something really amazing. He says, give to Caesar what is Caesar, and give to God's what is God's. Now, that's really helpful because we, 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 we have dual commitments in this life. Our ultimate commitment, though, is to God. Now, there's something hidden in this I want you to see, kids. Yeah, okay, give, give what goes to the government to the government. You know, that what belongs to them, they, they, they have part, a say in that. But then he says, but give to God the things that are God's. Now, what is that? Now, here's the cool thing. What we know is that you and I belong to God. So here's another coin. This is like the quarter, our quarter. You've seen these before. So Jesus says, yeah, give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, but give to God the things that are God's. And Because really, in all actuality, it's like we're a coin, and we belong to God. So I put my picture on there. You could put your picture on there, and it says, God's. We are God's children. We belong to God. That's the exciting thing I want you to know today in this story. Give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, the God the things that are God's. You belong to God. The coin of your life uh, belongs to God. In the Ten Commandments, the first commandment, God makes a decision about us. He says, I am the Lord your God. You belong to me. He's made a decision about you. That's what I want you to know today. He's chosen you. You're his. He loves you. And that is all in this saying of Jesus. Give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, but give yourself to God because you belong to God. Have a great day. Enjoy the singing. Have a good time in the word with your parents at home in Sunday school or as you listen to this in our worship service. The first reading is from the 33rd chapter of Exodus. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, 
and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. The word of the Lord. I will stand in the congregation, I'll exalt you. I will stand in the congregation, I'll exalt you. Let your children of your salvation lift their praises to hallelujah. reading is from 1st Thessalonians, the first chapter. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be for you, for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we've had among you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to the 22nd chapter of Matthew. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus and what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, teacher, we know that you're sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? 
But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. And then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And when they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm excited to delve in the word with you today. We've heard a remarkable story, a remarkable story from Exodus. And I think this story has a lot of connection to our lives today. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's go to work. Moses has been chosen as the one that God will bring the people out of slavery in Egypt and bring them to freedom. And that's happened. And now Moses has gone up on Mount Sinai and he's brought down the Ten Commandments and the covenant, really. Uh, and the people have already begun worshiping another God and they've fashioned the golden calf and everything has gotten turned upside down and what a debacle that was. And so that's about where we are in the story. And so now Moses is interceding because God is saying, you know, we're gonna keep this going, but Moses is interceding for the people. Now the first cool little spot I wanna stop here at this point is as we hear Moses interceding for Israel we have to think about how that prefigures Christ. Um, where Paul says in Romans 8 that the Spirit, you know, um, the third person of the Trinity, intercedes for us. This one that Jesus talks about as an advocate, a counselor. And so it's pretty amazing that in your reality right now and in mine, that we have Christ as the great high priest who intercedes for us and the Holy Spirit interceding for us. Um, we've got that, that's quite a team that we have on our side. Um, I want you to know that good news today as we walk through this story. So Moses, you know, says, you know, God, you've chosen um, me to do this, so help me out here. Come alongside come with me. Um, and so God responds. Um, and it's kind of cool because Moses says, God, if I'm going to do this, this is what I need. And, you know, he kind of lays it out very clear. God, this is what I need to know. And this is what you've got to give me. And God makes a promise. He says, okay, um, I'll do that for you. And this is how I'll do it. My presence will go with you and my peace. Now, I also want to stop here at this point and say, you know, sometimes um, we don't get the freedom we have in the gospel when it comes to prayer and our relationship to God in Christ. Look at Moses is doing here. I mean, he's telling God, in essence, what God needs to do. I mean, now, I think that the great thing about that is we have that freedom in prayer to go to God and say, God, please help in this way. Um, you know, and of course we, not our will, but God's will be done. But God wants us to come to him with our honest hopes and dreams and aspirations. And, you know, I've oftentimes prayed that way that, you know, Lord, how can it not be helpful for you to not intervene in this certain way? And and, you know, I'm sure God kind of at a certain level goes, well, that's adorable, Bill, aren't you something? But, you know, God is supple that way, it would seem, um, and, and wants to work with us. And so he works with Moses, and he says, okay, I'll give you my peace and my presence. Um, and then Moses says, well, okay, that's great, God, but 
you know, because God says, I'll go with you. But then Moses says, if you will not go with us, but I thought God just said, I will go with you. But then now Moses is saying, but you won't go with us. But the us versus individual is the key. Moses hears that God says, I'll go with you, Moses. I like you. But Moses says, you've got to go with us. And so now he actually goes back to God and wants to do some renegotiating. And again, look at how Moses is interceding for the people. Um, you know, again, we've got Jesus as our high priest. And we've got an intercessor. And this has to prefigure Christ uh, for us. As we think about the, the sirens that are going on in our world today and all the trouble we see and all the stress and anxiety that we are under about all kinds of issues and what's going on, we have a promise that in the midst of those sirens, we've got someone who's interceding for us. Um, and in fact, Jesus will say the same thing that Moses said, and he'll say, I'm with you always to the end of the age. God said to Moses, I'll go with you. Moses, go with us. And God says, okay, I'll do it. And we have the promise in Christ that he goes with us through every crisis. And he's, he's present with us. But you know what? That's not enough for Moses. Um, after all of that, Moses says, God, I need more. I want to see your glory. Now Moses has had God talking to him. He's been in God's presence, the pillar of fire um, uh, and the, the pillar of smoke during the day. And he's got this direct link to God, but he says, no, I want to see your face, God. I want to see your glory. That's in essence what Moses is asking. And you know, I think about us with that because we've been given so much, the word, the gospel, the word and sacraments, and yet we want more. We want God on our terms. God, prove it. Well, that's interesting. God, at this point, says, hmm. Well, again, God's going to work with Moses, but he's going to do a little bit of a redirect. He's going to change things up a little bit. He says, all right, I'm going to show you my glory, but not completely. In fact, I'm going to put you in the cleft of this rock, and when I pass by, I'm going to cover up your eyes with my hand, and then I'll take it away when I pass by. And you just get to see my back, because you can't see my face. Well, of course, the reason for this, which is kind of strange perhaps to people who aren't familiar with the biblical story, um, is that God is so righteous, so glorious, that for us human beings to see God face to face, it would just do us in. We couldn't handle it. So, and God knows it. So Moses is asking for something that will actually kill him. And God graciously says, no, I'm not going to do that for you, Moses. I'm going to pass by. I'm going to cover up your eyes as I pass by, and you can see my backside. <laughs> oh, there's got to be some humor in that, doesn't there? Well, what about us? <sighs> in the midst of our proof, in the midst of, you know, our telling God the terms of which we want God to do what we want God to do in the world, and we want God to show up in the way we want God to show up. I mean, just think of Adam and Eve. Um, when they're in the garden, and they've got everything but one tree they can't eat from, and they want to be in charge. They can't handle it. Well, so Moses is the same way. I want it all, God. But God says, no, I can't do that one because it'll kill you. And that's true for us as well as Moses. But there's probably more to it than that. In fact, Terence Fredheim, a wonderful Lutheran Old Testament prof, from Luther Seminary, now retired, says, um, for God to be fully present would be coercive. Faith would be turned into sight, and humankind could not but believe. 
In other words, for God to do what Moses is saying, it would force us to believe. God's presence cannot be obvious. There must be an element of ambiguity such that disbelief remains possible. A sense of God's mystery must be preserved. This text shows that even for Moses, there's an essential mystery in the confrontation with God. Now that's, that's helpful and that's interesting. Um, God is not a manipulative God. God is not going to force us. How many times I've had people say to me, well, I'd believe in God if God would just prove God's self. But let's even go further. Because Luther, just like we've been talking about this story prefiguring Christ, Luther sees in this back side of God, in God showing Moses his back, he sees Christ. Listen to what he says. Now we look at after his passing and see what he has done for us. That is, we see his back. We see what he left behind for us, namely that he, God and man, died and rose for us. Thus, Christ's humanity might be termed his back. In this, we recognize him. In this life, until we arrive at the place where he shall also be, we shall also behold his face and his glory. So in essence, the good news of this, as we hear about this story, is we have to automatically think, wow, God has showed us God's back as well, and that's Jesus, his death and resurrection on the cross. God is veiled, God is hidden, but yet God has given us something to hold on to. We don't have to grasp and grope around searching for God in all kinds of philosophies and psychologies and, and all kinds of, um, you know, looking around in creation and this and that. Yeah, God's available out there, but not in the way he is in the person of Jesus. That's the special way God says, I want you to seek me and find me here in the person of Jesus, in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Wow, We've, we get to see God's back, God's humanity. That's where he's found, hidden, clothed in the cross. Humanity wants super displays of power and, and you know, <laughs> all kinds of shows and all kinds of spectacular things. And God simply says, no, I'm going to come and show you because it's really the only way I can give you life. I'm going to come, and Luther will even say, as an earthworm, <laughs> as a fragile baby, as an earthly human being, fully God yet fully human, and I'm going to go to the cross and take your sin upon myself and I'm going to defeat death for you on the cross. That's where, if you want to find God, that's where we find God. Today, there's a lot of sirens and there's a lot of anxiety. I'm feeling it, I know you are. But today, God's given you a gift. He's shown you his very self in the person of Jesus Christ. His forgiveness, his grace, his love, may that surround you and envelop you this day.
with the gift of the Holy Spirit, we join together in confessing our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people everywhere according to their need. Loving God, we give you thanks this day that you have shown yourself to us in ways we would not expect, in ways that are a surprise and a delight to our eyes. We pray that you would give us what we need that exceeds our desires and reveals you in hidden places. Make our eyes open to search and to long for your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we continue to ask for your presence with those who are recovering from natural disasters, whether it be fire or hurricane or tropical storm uh, or other tragedies in their lives. May the healing presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, be with them and in them and around them. We also pray that it would be with those who are displaced from their homes, that you would be with immigrants and refugees who are in danger for their lives and who are struggling and vulnerable at this time. Continue also to be with those who combat COVID in various ways, with those who are susceptible, with those who are sick, that your healing and guiding hand may be upon them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, this week we are mindful of those who have come before us. We especially remember the indigenous people of this nation and of nations everywhere. We remember and repent of a sordid history at times, and we ask for your healing for us now. We are mindful today that, we are, that our church stands on the ancient lands of the Duwamish, the Suquamish, and the Coastal Salish. We pray that you would enrich our relationships together. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, there are many in our midst who are in need of your care and who are celebrating this day. We pray and celebrate with David and Susie Gazelle as they celebrate their 25th wedding anniversary this week. We pray that your healing hand would be upon many in our congregation for Kathy Ford as she's experiencing severe sciatica pain, for Carol Maddox, who is hospitalized in ICU, for Kathy Bowman and her family as they mourn the death of her brother, for Darcy London family as they mourn the death of Darcy's grandmother, for Debbie Wills, who is anticipating surgery, and for Webb Rhodes, who is having issues with dialysis. We also pray for John and Marilyn Adair. God, we ask your healing hand on those recovering from illness and surgery for Julie Anger, Johanna Hansen Keller, Linda Roberts, Kathy Hunt, and Lisa Stevens. And for those who are facing cancer, we name Melanie and Jim and Elizabeth, Dave, Jim, Ron, Kathy, and Carol. We also lift to you those who are deployed and for their families here at home, remembering Jordan, Jason, Paul, Jillian, Radley, Rebecca, Eric, Megan, Jared, Andrew, and David. And we continue to pray for many in our community and for those who are upon our hearts. We lift them to you, Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the mercy and the love that you have shown through your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please take in that breath of God's peace and presence with you if you are worshiping alone or take some time to share the peace with those around you.
Blessings to you this day and welcome once again for all those who are worshiping online in this way. We uh, want to continue to up our connection with you during this time, even as we're physically separated, although we are starting to come together in, in certain ways at this time. Uh, we would like to invite you to fill out a, an SLC Connect card. There'll be a slide coming up that has a QR code on that. Or you can simply go to our website and you can um, find that Connect card at Silverdale Lutheran, all one word, dot O-R-G, and then forward slash connect dash card. We also have a slide coming up here in a minute that has a registration link for our in-person worship. Uh, it has a QR code, I should say, there that you can scan with your phone, and it'll take you right to that. But you can always go to our website and, and search for that and get signed up if you would like to be a part of in-person worship. There are a few different options for being here on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. You can sign up for that in-person worship. It's fairly limited here in the sanctuary. Uh, you can if you've enjoyed Park and Praise, you can continue to come and to park, and you can be with other folks in their cars and, and live stream. Uh, we will have a live stream of the Sunday worship. You can also just simply park outside. There'll be an area where you can listen through the FM transmitter to kind of what's going on in here uh, over your radio. And uh, in all of those circumstances as well, we will be bringing communion out uh, to the parking lot and communing those who wish uh, to participate. So again, we're not quite back to where we can all be together in person uh, as we've been in the past, but we're making a way for to hopefully reach uh, the needs of all who want to worship. And then one last thing, uh, you can go on our website as well. Uh, you can go on PB's teaching in YouTube, and you can find our Sunday school videos that will go along with the lessons. If you don't have Sunday school materials, please, please, please let us know right away. We will deliver those to your door. We would be delighted to do that, to do that, and we have volunteers that'll make that happen.
Let us pray. Merciful God, everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and jo our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. now how in the night in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread blessed it broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this in remembrance of me Lord, remember us in your love you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God are ready for the people of God. We invite you now to share communion with those with whom you are present or to receive that gift yourself. Thank you. 
as we have shared this gift, received this gift from God this day, we also remember that this meal goes out to others through the Joy Brigade and through visitation and through Eucharistic ministers. And so let us pray as that meal goes out. Lord God, we pray that as we have been fed by your word this day and certainly by this meal, we pray that it would also go out as your kingdom bre- breaks forth into the world, that those who cannot be with us, those who cannot um, access this, uh, this worship together may be fed uh, in the presence of your people. And we pray for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Spirit-filled and Spirit-led. Abide in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.